College Football 25 is looking pretty good. Now, I'm not really a news channel, but I wanted to update everyone about the new details that we know about College Football 25 because it's important and I'm excited. I need to let you know that this video is sponsored by EA. I am an EA partner. And basically what they did is they let me see some of this information early so I could get it out as fast as possible. So thank you, EA, for sponsoring this video. They just released a trailer as well as an article detailing the features that we know are confirmed. I'll start off talking about the trailer, then I'll go into the features here in a little bit. So this trailer was just a cinematic trailer, but I tell you, it made me want to run through a wall. They played Welcome to the Jungle in the background. You get to see a lot of traditions from these schools. The lighting in this looks very, very cool. It says they did update their lighting technology, so it's going to be a lot different from Madden, or maybe Madden borrowed it from this one because this is probably the best I've ever seen the shadows and stuff look in a football game so far. Another thing that strikes me from the trailer right away is it seems like they're really honing in on the pageantry and the traditions from all of the schools in the country. And it's not just like the big name schools. Wyoming got a lot of screen time in this trailer, which really proves the point. Every team in the game is at least one person's favorite team. They really took that to heart and they're giving every team the time it deserves and the unique details to each school, which seems to be appreciated. There also seems to be like dynamic weather in this trailer. Like there's a lot of shots of like snow, rain, sun in different spots at the time of day. So the shadows are casted at different spots. Just interesting little notes. And another thing you'll see from the trailer that like longtime NCAA fans will notice is what we actually have the names on the back of the jerseys now. It's no more generic QB number three. It's Quinn Ewers at Texas. It's gonna be the first time in NCAA history you're not gonna have to download a fan-made roster on day one. It used to be a tradition. Vikes fan 22 had historic numbers back in the day from what I remember. I am gushing over the lighting aspects that does make the colors look a little bit more dynamic and the shadows make it feel more realistic. However, I do still have have a problem with the player models. I think that's more of an issue with the engine that they're forced to use on the Frostbite engine. They still look like Madden, like everyone says. And I think the biggest issue is probably with the offensive linemen. It's like their arms are never proportionate to their body. But I can get past the goofy looking models if the gameplay is good. Some people notice that there are some similar animations here, like this tackle on Jalen Milrow. I think they pulled straight from Madden, which to be honest is not really a surprise. You already have this backlog of years and years from Madden animations, which I know is not everyone's favorite, but it's a starting point. They can add in their own and everything's going to be tuned differently from this game compared to Madden. I imagine it's going to be way more wide open. Like you're going to see more big plays. Running backs are going to have a higher yards per carry, that kind of thing. And they already said every single team in the game has a unique playbook. So hypothetically, you would think that an option offense can work as well as like a deep vertical passing offense or pro style. Whatever you want to use, there's going to be options there. In NCAA 14, there were a lot of different strategies you could use to attack the defense. There were still some meta plays, but I liked being able to use the option offense, and I also like using a lot of pass-heavy offenses as well. I'm excited to see the crowd in this game too. Usually crowd is an afterthought in football games. But if we look at this like shot of the Texas A&M crowd, maybe if you zoomed in on every person individually, it doesn't look that great. But as a mass as a whole, the way they're twirling those like towels in the air, it looks awesome. And that's what the college game should be. Like the atmosphere should be a priority. It's what put NCAA ahead in a lot of respects compared to Madden. And EA's already really said they wanted to focus on making the game feel authentic to each school. So they're gonna have a lot of unique fight songs, different audio cues for each each school. And I know specifically they're hyping up the audio, which we haven't heard much in-game audio yet. We only get a little slice of like Chris Fowler giving like a, a hype up speech, which was kind of epic with like the helicopters in the air. I do expect the atmosphere and audio of this game to blow out recent Madden's audio. All their talks about committing to authenticity leads me to believe that this could be the best crowd atmosphere audio wise we've ever heard. With this just being a cinematic trailer though, we didn't see any actual gameplay. Just a few moves that you've probably seen before, like this little step back juke, stiff arms, those kind of things. What was visually pretty was like these turnover celebrations, like the Bama belt thing they got. The pit dunk here is awesome. We also get to see a lot of the equipment in the game. Players like this Penn State one has the untucked shirt underneath. You've got the knee pads, which seem to be optional to where they can be above the knee or below like traditionally, which I think is the first time we've ever seen that. In the blog post, they mentioned the feature I was holding out for the most. Team Builder is making a return in College Football 25. So you know what that means. The next UGF Panda style series for me is in the works and it will be returning. 
Not UGF Panda specifically, a brand new team. But I'll probably make UGF just so the community can play around with it. So the way this team builder will work is similar to how it worked in years past. You can go to a website, upload logos, download community made teams and logos as well. Creatives can use Photoshop and stuff and upload your files there. I feel like every time there's been an in-game creative suite, it's been a little rough around the edges. So I'm glad they went this method. I know it's annoying for the average person to use these websites, but this is the best way to get the most high quality designs out there. One downside of it is it's only available in offline dynasties and offline play now. So unfortunately, you can't challenge your friends with your custom made team and online dynasties. You're not gonna be seeing my created team versus another's unless we physically travel and play each other offline. And then alongside with online dynasty, they did confirm that there's up to 32 teams for online dynasty, which is way larger than what NCAA 14 had at about 12 teams, I think. So that should be really fun to explore. That's like multiple conferences of teams. The downside with this though, there is no cross platform at release. Release. But I imagine it will get updated later, but I think Madden had this issue at one point as well, which they did end up updating that. However, there is cross-platform on other modes like Play Now and a new mode called Road to the College Football Playoff, which I think is an online head-to-head -head mode similar to like FIFA Seasons, I think. That's mainly for competitive stuff, not really rebuilding teams or anything. The blog post also mentioned things about new gameplay and rating systems says it's going to fluctuate throughout the game. So I wonder if that's tied to like composure or like their hot and cold rating, similar to NCAA 14, which was kind of happening in the background. But I wonder if this will be much more upfront. Like if your quarterback misses like five passes in a row and gets cold, does that mean his ratings are gonna dip for a little bit? Or if he makes a couple of big catches in a row, is that gonna build like a momentum thing? I'm not entirely sure. Or maybe it's like randomized to where like maybe a player sick that day. I don't know, I'm kind of speculating at this point, but intrigued to see how this works out. They also mentioned something about team tiers. I mean, we all know that Alabama and Ohio State are in a completely different tier than like Eastern Michigans of the world, but how does that affect in game? We shall see. And they also said there's new in-game passing mechanics. They did not really go into any more depth in this blog post, but I imagine they'll mention it later in like a gameplay trailer. They also said there's a wear and tear system. So as the hits add up, players wear down. So you're gonna have to kind of like manage how many reps each players get. Like if a running back, if you gave him 30 carries, he's gonna be at a huge injury risk. So make sure you switch players out, keep them fresh, which if done right, I think could be a cool feature. And I think this naturally lets you test out other players on your team instead of just always feeding like the best player on your team giving him a million touches and having no like negative effects. But I think what is interesting here is like when the fatigue lowers and you've given them more and more and more reps, it says there could be potential for on-field mistakes. So does their overall kind of dip if they're way too fatigued? Not sure. If you're super fatigued, you're gonna be playing much worse. It's just how human beings work. One feature I am a little confused on, pre-snap recognition. The description talks about trusting in high skill seniors versus like untested freshmen. Is this just simple as like you check before the snap? Like is a higher rated wide receiver gonna be more likely to beat a lower rated corner? I don't know. Is this a pre-snap recognition for like an option play? Like here's the main read to know when you're supposed to pull the ball. Is it an RPO kind of thing? We don't really know yet. Uh, there was not a lot of description here. And home field advantage is returning for this game. They did steal some of these features from NCAA 14 and put them in Madden in the recent years. I imagine it's going to look a lot similar to that. The squiggly lines, composure dips, confidence things, like if you're a low-level team on the road at Alabama and Tuscaloosa, you're going to be hitting your composure a little bit and your confidence if you're like a freshman quarterback for Eastern Michigan or something. Like we've all seen that that one video of the Oklahoma State quarterback and his hands shaking when they're getting whooped in a game. It's a small feature, but the mascots look pretty good so far. Almost not used to seeing the mascots look this good. They were a little bit derpy in NCAA 14 but that game is also 11 years old. I think an underrated feature that no one's really talked about is the bands look pretty good in this game. Like when you have all these runouts at the beginning of games, they're on the field with the teams, as well as like these smoke screens and pyrotechnics and all this jazz. They even have a screenshot of the national championship trophy. And you can even see like little fingerprints on it, which is like a small little detail to add a little more realism, which I thought was neat. You can even see the Heisman trophy in another screenshot, which looks really nice. I wonder if we're actually gonna get a Heisman trophy like presentation or of some sort, because you actually see it on the pedestal over here with a backdrop. So I think bare minimum, you're gonna be getting a picture with the Heisman trophy winner. 
which would be cool to see. They've mentioned this in the past, but just to confirm it, they have unique commentary and broadcast teams. So they have a set of two here. Chris Fowler and Kirk Herbstreet will be like the premier team for big games. For smaller matchups, you'll be getting Reese Davis, Jesse Palmer, and David Pollock. And I wonder if they, in Dynasty, if they'll even have it to where like, if your game is not televised, will there even be a commentary team? I don't really know for sure, but I feel like that would be a cool little tidbit. And I really expect it to all be ESPN branded. I would highly doubt if there's Fox, CBS, or anything like that. This is the first time we've seen multiple broadcast teams in an EA video game since NCAA Basketball 10. I'm excited to see this in action. It seems like the commentators are, themselves are very excited to be in this game. Road to Glory is also in this game, of course. The way they're describing this sounds a lot like the NCAA 11 kind of Road to Glory, which is one of my favorites. It says, Live the life of a student athlete with your creative player. Take home the Heisman as you build an unforgettable college football legacy. But the biggest thing here is managing your weekly schedule, GPA, and your image, which is probably NIL related, which is something we've never had in the Road to Glory experience before. You can earn coach trust to get more playing time, which is something we saw in NCAA 14. Thankfully, in this game, you can use the transfer portal to get the time and glory you deserve, which has become way more common in the modern college football era. Fun doing a little weekly schedule GPA stuff. So I'm glad that they're choosing to focus on this. But everyone's favorite mode in this, of course, is Dynasty. And the description they have here, create a coach, take control, upgrade their abilities, and build a powerhouse college football program. Establish your coaching staff, and then work to recruit the best talent either straight from high school or direct from the transfer portal. I am curious to see how they balance the recruiting in this game. Now more than ever, the transfer portal has become a bigger piece of the players coming into each program. They have not said anything about a coach carousel either, but I imagine naturally if you like get fired or something, you're gonna have to be able to get to a new job. So I feel like there has to be some sort of system like that, but there has been no specific mention of it yet. I'm not gonna mention anything about Ultimate Team here. I do not care about that game mode, but it is in the game. The pre-order options are like you can get the deluxe edition, which will give you three day early access. So you could play the game on July 16th instead of the release date of July 19th. You could also get an MVP bundle is what they're calling it to where you get Madden and NCAA for their deluxe versions. So you'll get early access for both of those games. It's an exorbitant cost at $150 though. But I believe the base game is like 60, 70 bucks, like the standard games cost these days. So you decide if those pre-orders are worth it for you. Another downside is there is gonna be no PC version for College Football 25, at least right now so the game's only going to be available on playstation 5 and xbox series x but all in all i am super happy with what they've announced like team builder dynasty road to glory it's all looking good on paper right now excited to hear more specific details about each mode and how the gameplay is going to work on the field and i cannot wait to make another team builder dynasty it's my favorite gaming experience my channel has a purpose again anyways that's all i got for this video i hope you guys are excited for college football 25 you guys are all legends of my book and as for me i am drew morris big old drewski not the expert and i'll see you guys in my next video peace